My subject, which I'm going to present now, is pretty different from what is going on. The closest link was Ada, because she works on central dogma. I work on transcription, I work on transcription. But again, you may find after the end of the half an hour of my presentation, the subject is interesting. I'm going to talk about some second messenger and regulation of gene expression in bacteria, which are infectious, but I will take a model system which is not infective. It is mycobacterium model system, which is a classical gram-positive bacteria, which is from the soil bacteria. But the regulation of mechanism, regulation of transcription, regulation of second messengers are more or less same for all the organisms of mycobacteria. The questions we asked in this talk, and I am asking for several years now, that is it possible to target any of these second messenger synthesis pathway for by antibiotics to kill the bacteria? The central dogma of molecular biology, transcription, translation are classical targets. I have presented that very well, and several Nobel prizes have gone into the detection of the RNA polymerase as a target, DNA polymerase as a target, ribosome as a target, etc. But slowly people are understanding the important pathways are many alternative sub-pathways which are controlling this transcription translation, and this is one of them. What is the second messenger? So this is the outline of the talk I already said. There are three classical bacterial second messengers so far known. Starting from cyclic AMP receptor, cyclic AMP, works through cyclic AMP receptor protein discovered in 1950s. Then guanosine tetraphosphate and pentaphosphate discovered in 1960s. And cyclic di-AMP discovered in 1989. But later cyclic di-AMP, cyclic AMP, PMP, several such second messengers have come and global gene expression they regulate. I will try to give a very small amount of glimpse of the team which you could achieve in our life. These are the signal transduction mechanism. Is there any pointer here? Thank you. I'm sorry to give you trouble. Not. So if there's a stick of oxidative stress, osmotic shock, whatever you have it, a kind of environmental cues which wants to alter the cell under certain condition. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'm so thank you for being here. Thank you. And that goes through, passes through the membrane and induces cellular response through series of second messengers and nutrient deprivation is the first messenger we work on and then it goes to second messenger cyclic IGMP. There are two proteins which makes PPPGP and cyclic IGMP very small molecules, 600 to 800 molecular weight and they regulate gene expression mostly by binding to RNA polymerase in transcription. So I will talk mostly about two proteins from enzymatis, but I said at the beginning of my talk, they are more or less same. They have relaxed synthesis of stable RNA during starvation, diagonal as a cyclase, and we have published several reviews on this over the last 10, 15 years. There is a hydrolysis domain, there is a synthesis domain, and the regulatory domain in both the proteins, in the gene, rail and DCPA gene, what this means, that they synthesize the small molecule, then they degrade the small molecule depending upon the concentration present of the molecule present. If there are too much concentration, then the degradation will start. If there's a less concentration, synthesis will start. So there is a beautiful balance between the two activities which controls the mechanism. So the function is transcription, PCVGP, translation, they affect virulence, DNA replication, and several pathways, modified motility, virulence, translation, facility, proteolysis, biofilm. This is a very current interest now, how they inhibit biofilm and transcription. 
CID GMP controls differentiation and cell division in Colobacter. This has been shown over the last 10 years. Classical work by, and the review by Regina Henge from Germany, Bali, showed, she showed that how the control of Colobacter <coughs> can be happened between side by side with the GMP. So the, how the mechanism happens? We showed it. Our first interest was to find out whether mycobacteria shows stringent response or cyclic DIGMP, cyclic DIGMP response or not. So we knocked out the gene by homologous combination, knocking, we made a complemented strain, knocked out strain, and showed the cellular rate is very much compromised. And nutrient starvation, high PPVGP changes. And in year 2000, we showed it uh, seven, uh, several years back that under starvation, there is a change in the morphology. And if you overexpress it, the morphology regains. So the morphology change indicates there's a change in the cellular membrane, the lipid components. So we went further and we wanted to see whether antibiotic sensitivity is also affected. So we asked the question, we showed the morph change in the morphology by lipid profile and the cell division analysis. Then we asked, whether they are regulate antibiotic sensitivity. In order to do so, we approached, we have, we have been given by the government a very nice facility, a center for excellence, where we purchased a machine, phenotypic microarray, which I am sure all of you know, it's a very common machine now, where in one shot, you can follow 96 growth profile in a 96 well plate. And if we have a several plates, you can multiply that, which would have taken years to do a growth. Now you can do that in phenotype microarray. You can look at the growth of the organism at the defined condition. I listed here the condition, carbon pathway, nitrogen pathway, osmotic and other iron effect, biosynthetic pathway. So in if only log commercialize it, what it happened, this is a, it's okay, here, here. What has happened, what happens, that you follow the growth, static condition. You put a diet, a trisolium dye, as the organism respires, it takes, it takes oxygen, it looks at the oxygen rate of evolution, changes of the color of the dye takes place. So you go, it's a static culture growth curve you follow, and you follow the effect. So intensity of the particle color is directly proportional to both. Color intensity is plotted as area and graph for reference. So you get a time-dependent growth curve. If a mutant strain goes better, you get one color, you put this color. And if your mutant strain doesn't go very well, and the composition gives another color. So the coloration depends upon the growth. And you get a series of color, series of curves. Every each one is a different color. So you have a knockout strain versus the white type strain who follow the growth curve that enhance survival in the presence of antibiotics. And we are very surprised to see this observation. It was indicated before by one publication that if you remove PPVDP synthesis enzyme, second messenger gene, then organism may become resistant. So that means how we thought that will be the antibiotics action site. But it showed that delta rail strain of mycobacteria in cellular in the presence of antibiotics. So we proceeded further on this in every condition. So several systems have been studied on this. This is basically showed how the coloration showed the one line conclusion in survival in the presence of antibiotics. There are certain aberrations and different conditions, etc. In comparison, when we look at this in a Minimum inhibitory concentration and PM analysis, streptomycin, norfloxacin. We calculate the delta L, delta, and complemented the delta L strain with the organism. See, you have to check that if you are removing the gene out, whether there is a polar effect or not. To counter circumvent, there is not a polar effect. You put back, you knock in, begin by, and it can go anywhere if the effect is rescued. That means you know you are working in the right direction. Similarly, cyclic DGMP gene was knocked out. It was incorporated, complemented strain, and we looked at the antibiotic. We don't expect streptomycin, norfloxacin, in any case. Most important, we found ampicillin, 
amoxicillin. Many of them we have not done on this. I mean, not, no, no detection is ever found. And we have a dye reduction value in this organism. So in summary, what we showed that Delta L and Delta C, we showed an unsurvival in the presence of multiple antibiotics. MIC determination followed by SPM data. Impairing this signaling makes them swing it resistant to antibiotics. This was, that means single response or PPUGP synthesizing rail and cytogenic controlling the cell program sensing both have effect from the antibiotics. It's a differential gene activity. So the rail becomes a very important parameter for antibiotic sensitivity. Overproduction and CGMP increases the cells in the biofilm like countries. If we have a wild type biofilms, this is the wild type strain. If we have rail overexpression, there's a biofilm expression comes. We have quantitative data, I may not have that data with crystal violet, the standard way of quantitation, and then we put it back, we see the same effect. The knockout strains are elongated. That's a very important observation we published in last year, I think, sometime. And we show that it is a knockout strains are elongated, whereas delta when you in complemented, see the difference between these two. It's elongated and it comes back to the regular shape on the moment you knock out, knock in like white type. So there is a cell shape changes as a function of the gene. And this is the length distribution of the strain. We have to do this and length distribution, there is a change in the length happening. They are multinucleated. You can see that, that they are multinucleated and You can see one here. Yeah, they're both here. Yeah. to go back. They are knockout strain and multisepted. You can have the cephal sept. That means cell division is impaired. You can have the position of the septet. You can say multisepted formation is taking place. So basically, all these slides showed you these two particular pathways, second messengers, rail PPUGP and stinger response pathway and cyclic DIGMP or oral sensing pathway are very much connected with the cell circle structure division and is multinucleated, multisepted antibiotic resistance. So these two are very important enzyme which enzymes which are enzyme system secondary messenger synthesis, which I want to impress upon. So PM data showed that these are the environmental independence of multi-antibiotic. I already talked about it, so I want to waste my time to read it. So regular cell division, cell morphology, and both rates. We proceed further, but we were trying to look at it, whether there is any natural analog which will inhibit rail synthesis, which is very important. Came to our notice, it's an amazing observation, by Bill Jacob from Albert Einstein Medical College. He's a big man for, a big name for tuberculosis research. He showed that vitamin C is a natural inhibitor of the TB, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Remember, vitamin C is the classical drug you can take because it has no adverse effect. You can take as much as you want. It comes with your natural food. Linus Pauling talked about vitamin C lifelong. <coughs> Bill Jacob showed vitamin C is very important by working through the cell membrane and mycobacterium tuberculosis he showed. He published it in Nature a few years back. Then we looked at it, and this is the paper which I'm talking about. Bill Jacob, mycobacterium tuberculosis is extraordinarily sensitive to killing by vitamin C, <coughs> by fenton mediated damage. We asked the question, is the rail is affected by vitamin C? Why I'm going to show you, why I thought so. We look at the white type strain and immediately see that with high concentration of vitamin C, the biofilm information is inhibited. The reason being the guanosintertophosphate structure has a tremendous analogy with the vitamin C structure. That's what we can see. There is a structural similarity between the things. And when you look at the PPVGP assay, guanosintertophosphate assay is the TLC as a thin layer chromatographic assay, we see the inhibition happening. So in vivo, PAPUGP was quantitated. We looked at this quantitation. 
and we did the tiny tips and we found the KMT max that we can find a long term survival as it's also very much complex. So very short work we have published recently last year to to indicate this point. We are still working on it and have some fantastic results on this I'm going to present them. The second point which I'd like to talk about today is that in spite of knocking out rail, it is such an important enzyme, we find that organism produces PBVGP. So where from it is coming? So it comes to your mind immediately that perhaps the protein is so important that there are multiple pathways exist to synthesize gonocentrate phosphate. See, if there is double enzyme which are involved in this, then in antibiotic inhibition, multiseptic, multinucleate, and whatever we have said, this has some implication or not. So we look into the genomic data, and several people have published already there are alternative hypotheses, alternate way of synthesizing guanosinterta phosphate, and we identified another protein, MSRH2RHT. I'll explain this protein, an enzyme, which contains a P2EGP synthesizing domain, modification of P2EGP synthesis. We do not know antibiotic is attacking which one. We have some idea now. And confers go, confers both advantage to actively growing cells. P2EGP synthesis and activity shows in V1. Both domains are essential. Purpose. There are two domains. Why two domains? We found that this organism has one ribonuclease domain and one synthesis domain. Not the, so why a ribonucleus domain coming? That was a big question on our mind. Why all of a sudden p 2 egp synthesis has to come with RNSH domain? So we worked further on it, and streptococcus, bacillus, citrinus, enterovector facilis, vivio cholerae, mycobacterium tuberculosis, everywhere we find there is a second domain present, and we call it small alarm. See, p 2 egp synthesis really is known as alarm. Name was given before because under alarming condition it is coming up. So it's a hormone reaction, it's called alarm. And this hormone reaction gives the synthesis. So there is a second enzyme system, SAS, small alarm synthesis. That is what it's called, known as SAS proteins. So if you look for SAS, you will see that. All are present. So we looked at the elevated p 2 gene under neutron cell condition. We first showed it, then by we, we have worked on it, and second synthesis also, we first reported it, particularly in mycobacteria. And mycobacterium sigmatis has, and tuberculosis doesn't have that yet, not been identified. Christina Stalling is working on this. There is an RNA one domain. And we ask the question why RNA is not present. Only potent, and there is a, another RNA is present, but this RNA is is coming along with mycobacterium p 2 egp synthesis enzyme. What is RNA is H function? I, it is a very old molecular biology. Everybody knows about it. I just want to tell you that it cleaves RNA DNA hybrid. What happens? The working hypothesis is that. The DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase has different rate of movement, and particularly under starvation, the alt structure, the movement, rate of movement becomes different. As a result, both the enzyme collide. There is a alloop formation takes place. This is the alloop which I'm studying. Alloop formation takes place. And RNA is a classical enzyme which removes the alloop. So we believe under starvation condition, alloop removal is taking place. So to show that, we did uh, design some assays in vitro assets, where we synthesize our loops. We made a small oligos, which are complementary, and we made a small alloop formation, and this gel is a very busy gel, but I can still explain this is very important. This is double-stranded DNA, this is with the alloop, so molecular it goes up, and if we have a RNSH positive control, it gets degraded, only the alloop is degraded, not the DNA is degraded. Negative control, this stays, this is the same replication, but if I have our protein MSRH2RHT, we say it's completely degraded. It is working better than the positive control. Indicating thereby that it is it does remove RNA, the unloops and it is breaking the cells. And then it got the antibody and it checked and it found it is indeed there. So 
we met alleged two mutants and we found that, to cut a long story short, again, this is a very busy slide, and to cut a long story short, what I should say that this site basically tells us that if I remove RSH domain, RSD has effect. RSD, if I remove RSH effect. So both of them act in seeds, they come together. And we followed this assay two ways. This is also a very interesting assay. What we, what we do, we do a fluorescence resonance energy transfer studies where we put a donor group in one of the strands, accepted group in another strand. When they are coupled together, we have a quenching of fluorescence. When the RSH is acting, they dissociate. An enhancement of fluorescence takes place. So that is this card shows us. And these are the transcription assay, basically. And final model is basically that under stress, ion polymerase, these algae is forming. RNH2 is coming in, killing it. One point we could not establish, we are still trying, whether PPVGP is playing a role in this RNA ejaculation. We do not know. We have no direct proof. Circumstantial evidence we have, we have no direct proof. <coughs> Neither I have the structure of rail. I'm trying very hard to get RNA rail protein crystallized with a crystallographer colleague and myself. My laboratory, we are not yet successful. The only portion, part of it comes, not, not the full protein crystal yet, but successful. Many people are trying on that, but so therefore, that is the story basically. I'm finishing my work under stress. This cups and clips it, and I'll look into what is happening. One more indication I'll tell you it is it's just a new observation, and we have not published it yet. We are working, we are very excited about the structure and this that we have seen. But if you remove both the enzymes, MSRH2, RHD, and REL, still some residual gonocentrate of photosynthesis activity is in it. Such an important second messenger. Where from it comes? And we found polynucleotide phosphorylase, PNPS, has additional activity. And it makes not PPPGP or pentaphosphate, it makes PGPP. So difficult to detect because molecular weight by mass spec, if you do, is like a GTP. So you get a PGPP which has this cleavage activity change. So we are looking at it now. Further, we have almost complete the analysis, but I'm not presenting the data. So we end up that does MHRS to RSD affect antibiotic tolerance and sensitivities? We have no answer for that. And enhance antibiotic resistance. SAS effect antibiotic tolerance. And say so this has been reported before by others. So we look at it this way, we think in fact Matt is also the same thing. So it becomes a wonderful target in case of infectious organism by mycobacterium tuberculosis. We do not know. I close my talk. These are the people who did the work. There are different parts of the world now. Many of them, this is the guy who put me in the senior response. He's now an associate professor in sunny Albany. And he's in Wisconsin doing his postdoc. He carried the maximum work later. And others are all very well settled in different places. I'm very well funded, and AstraZeneca funded me initially in the French grant, in the German grant, UKD from the United Kingdom, and several funding, which also partly supporting my travel here. I have to finish the money. So that's about it. Thank you very much. And thank you.